climbing stairs is really in the hip thrusting pattern. We think of climbing stairs or as climbing as moving up, but whenever you climb a staircase, you're going to go just as far forward as you are going up. Now, if it comes to squats and deadlifts, we always focus on this forward backwards action with the hips. When you pick up the bar, you press the hips forward and the bar comes up vertically only as a side effect or a consequence of thrusting the hips forward. So you'll sit back, press forward. It's the same with stair climbs. Now, if you've got a particular name to follow, none of this will cure your knees. If you're working with something uh, severe or something quite specific, it may not be enough. But it can help to move pressure out of the knee and into the hip. So that's really what we want to be thinking about. Turn the action into a hip dominant pattern rather than a knee dominant pattern. And in that way it's the same as lunges, it's the same as everything else. It's very easy to lunge and be on a narrow stance and kind of come forwards and then you've got a lot of knee dominant work. The emphasis is really straightening the knee to come up. But if you broaden the stance a little bit, then when you're coming up, you're pulling back through the hip. The knee is relatively relaxed because the action then is with the upper leg pulling back and down. Same with squats, same with deadlifts. From the bottom you're pulling back and down with the heel. We translate that into a step up kind of action. Then you'll see here we have a step. I imagine pulling the heel back and down behind me. Boom, 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 boom. And that presses the hips forward and completes the action with my knee in a fairly stable position. You'll see the knee, the shin bone really, doesn't move very much when you focus on pulling the heel back and down behind the bike. The imaginary staircase, we repeat again with the other side, pulling back and down. Now when you watch someone climb the stairs or when you climb the stairs yourself, it can be difficult, if you don't have an eye for it, it can be kind of difficult to see the difference between a knee dominant pattern and a hip dominant pattern. From a distance they look quite similar. But when it's knee dominant, you get this sense almost that people are just pitched forward at the hips and they're just kicking the floor to come up. And that's not really a very efficient way to climb the stairs and can bring a lot of pressure to the knees. So we want to think about having the body upright, pulling back through the hip, and the knee straightens naturally as the leg comes underneath you because the emphasis is all on the femur, on the thigh, rather than on straightening the knee. And naturally, when you come up onto that leg, the leg is going to straighten, that keeps pressure out of the knee joint. Coming downstairs is often a much harder issue because you can't control it in the same way. If you're climbing stairs, you can move smoothly and slowly up and you can think about the muscles you want to engage. When you're coming downstairs, you're not afforded the same luxury. Every time you hop down a step, the quadriceps muscles fire kind of explosively in relation to the nerve, it's a reflex action. So if you want to come down softly and slowly, you really be able to need to do a one leg squat all the way down until the next foot touches the ground. And that's often not practical if you've got any issues or you're not strong enough simply to do that. So it's boring and it's time consuming and it looks a little bit weird. But one of my favorite approaches is actually to walk down the stairs sideways. You can lean back against the railing and you only step down when you're ready, when you're balanced, when you've got a foot in a good place. If you're confident with it, you can actually step down, walk down the stairs backwards. That'll be a little bit easier in some ways to control than coming forwards because you tip off. And then the problem could be with either knee, it could be the foot you're landing with, or the foot you're stepping off the that remain behind you. So you'll see if I'm stepping down here, Boom. If the pain is here, it's going to be a different issue to if the pain is on the landing leg. It's very difficult to move slowly through that and get pressure out of the knees. If I'm just free falling, 
I'm waiting for that knee to get to the point where it can't support me anymore. Boom. And then I'm just falling through the air. It's kind of, it's quite a chaotic thing and it's scary when you think about it too long. Likewise, if it's this knee, boom, and I'm going too quickly, I'm not going to be able to slow or control my descent very easily. But if you're, if you're facing the side, you can hold onto a railing, you may find you're able to sit back through the hips again, move the legs softly, and then transfer the weight when you're ready. Okay, so the reasoning behind all of this has to do with the anatomy of the thigh. A very common knee pathology, and it may not be the case for you, but it's common, is when there's excessive tension in the outside of the thigh, it pulls the kneecap towards the outside as you straighten the leg. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this well or not, but here we've got the muscles of the thigh, the vastus lateralis on the outside, and the medialis, vastus medialis oblique, VMO, on the inside. There's a lot of people who talk about the VMO, the vastus medialis oblique, as being a weak muscle that needs to be strengthened. So I'm oversimplifying, but what tends to happen is there's excessive tension in the outside of the leg, and that pulls the knee to the outside, and strengthening the inside muscle, the view is that that'll help to pull the knee back into alignment. Now, it makes a certain kind of sense, but I'm skeptical because when you've got a problem that has to do with excessive tension, adding more tension to it doesn't always fix it. If we go back a step, and I'm still oversimplifying, but bear with me because it seems to work, if the muscles in the outside of the thigh are too tight, it's often because the buttocks are too weak. There's a relationship between the thigh into the hip and the hip flexor and into the buttocks. So if you're thigh dominant already, you don't need to worry about training the muscles of the thigh more. It's very difficult to build up the vastus medialis without also training the other thigh muscles because all four muscles of the quadricep perform the same action. So as much as you can try to bring your awareness into this medial aspect of the leg, you can't isolate it in a pure sense of the word. You can't not be using the other muscles. But what you can do is you can focus on building up the muscles of the buttocks. In relative terms to the VMO, it's easy to isolate the buttocks or build up the hamstrings. There's a relationship between them too. And so what that does is if you build up the strength of the buttocks, it will reduce the need on the lateral thigh muscle to compensate. So instead of trying to strengthen the medial, the inside aspect of the quad, you're trying to resolve the tension on the outside. Now you can layer that a bit. If you massage the outside of the thigh, that feeds into the iliotibial band, which pulls into the knee. You can try to relax and resolve some of that tension while also building up the buttocks. You can start to correct knee alignment with these techniques. Now, of course, this isn't the same for everybody. And if you do have knee problems, it's a really good idea to see a specialist, either a Pilates or an exercise rehab person, a physiotherapist, osteopath. There's a lot of different people you can see. But in broad terms, this is something that a lot of people find helpful, strengthening the buttocks. And if you're not sure if this applies to you, you can practice. Sit down, pop one hand on the kneecap, straighten the leg, and see if you can feel the way the kneecap tracks. If it's tracking vertically, then you could be good, you could have different issues with your knee. But if it obviously comes across to the side as you straighten the leg, then you'll want to investigate that. You'll really want to see that looked at. So in terms of training and development, you'll find you'll want to increase body awareness and strength of the muscles that move the hip. One simple way to do this is laying hip extension. You lie on the front, you're not trying to use the back at all. You keep both hips touching the ground and you're lifting one knee up and down and you'll feel that working the muscles of the buttocks. That trains again the hip extension pattern. You can increase the range of motion if you come from a kneeling position. We're trying to not use the knee for this, so you keep the knee still, keep all the movement in the hip. 
all the way back through and lifting the heel up towards the ceiling. If you're at the point where you can do 15 or 20 of them fairly comfortably, you may wish to progress to a laying hip lift. Both feet are on the ground and if you apply leverage again through the heel, it'll keep pressure in the glutes and the hamstrings more than the knees. Again, if you can do 15 or 20 of them comfortably, you might want to progress to a single leg version. If the knees feel a bit funny, you may find you're trying to bring the heels too close to you, or if you're not getting any leverage, the heels may be too far away, and you want to make sure you get the feet in a good place where you can feel good leverage and you can feel the back of the leg working, and you're not feeling pressure in the knees. Of course you can train squats, deadlifts and lunges as well. If you like them, if you're in a position with your knees where you're capable of doing them, and you always want to keep that focus on moving the hips backwards and forwards as much as you can. And something I like doing occasionally, if you have access to a band, loop it around something, and then if you climb into it somewhat awkwardly, you can use this to bring more emphasis into the hip thrusting pattern as well. So you've got both legs in the band, the band is around your hips, walk forward so there's a little tension on that, and the band will pull you back by the hips, and then you press forward against that resistance. It'll help to stimulate the buttocks more. You'll feel that thrusting pattern more exaggerated. And then, of course, single leg step-ups. You can use a variety of steps of a variety of heights. The higher the step, of course, the more challenging it's going to be. One foot up on the step, grab onto something if you need to for balance, always pulling the heel back behind you and making sure you're trying to get as much of the foot on the step as you can. Often stairs are pretty shallow so we can't get our whole foot on the stair, but as much as you can, foot's flat, try to keep the emphasis on the heel, pulling back and behind you and don't brush it. Now if you get knee pain when you walk or when you squat and you're like a gram overweight, you've probably had somebody tell you you should lose weight. If you've got a knee pathology and you go from a 120 kilogram person to being a 100 kilogram person, you're still going to be then a 100 kilogram person with a knee pathology. If you start jogging and walking in an attempt to lose weight but the action irritates your knee, as much as you might be hoping for future progress, you're probably actually just going to make the issue worse. Use movements that are going to be beneficial for your knee and for your body. If we're talking about impact forces through your legs, depending on what you read, it could be anywhere from a couple to several times your own body weight. So a healthy knee is capable of supporting that. And if you lose 10 kilos or you gain 10 kilos, it's actually a drop in the ocean. That's not going to make a difference to a healthy knee. Training is action. More than anything else, it's movement. And there's no movement pattern for weight loss. You can train whatever you want, but weight loss isn't rehab. They're different things. And we get better at what we train. So, if you're practicing something, make it a good movement pattern. Practice something, get better at it, get better at moving well. If you practice poorly and you practice poor movement patterns, you're just going to get better at moving poorly, and that's not going to serve you well in the long term. If working on rehab, improving movement patterns, and strength doesn't help resolve your pain, then weight loss isn't going to either. You've got something else going on that needs to be investigated. And I've been talking mostly about pain in the knees. So if you've got pain in the hips or the ankles, you may be facing different problems. Um, often if the hip flexors are tight but the buttocks are weak, the hip can experience pain. So a lot of the same exercises will be useful. Strengthening the buttocks is not usually a bad idea. Most people can benefit from that. Now, having said all of that, especially if what I've outlined hasn't been helpful to you so far, it does need to be emphasised that your pain may not have anything to do with movement patterns at all. If you've damaged your cartilage, you can't undamage your cartilage just by changing how you climb the stairs. But it also needs to be emphasised that we really don't understand 
that much about pain dynamics in the human body. So sometimes under scans you can't find the reason for your pain, but your pain is still real. It probably can't be overestimated how important it is to consider that, that there could be a lot of different things going on. And I don't know who you are, I don't know what you're dealing with, what you're trying to work in relation to. So there's only so much help a video like this can be, of course. One final thing to consider as well is the angle of your feet and your ankle alignment. As a general rule of thumb, you want the knee and the toes pointing the same direction. If you're walking forwards or upstairs, the toes are pointing out and the knee is pointing forward, you will create tension in the relationship between them there. You can walk up with the toes a little bit out, but you might find to have the, you need to have the knees a bit out. And again, if the toes are a little pigeon-toed, you might want to have the knee a little bit in as well. So check that one as well, that the toes aren't out to the side and the knees facing forward. And when I apply leverage, when I press down in that foot, you can see I'm then rolling in on the ankle. And that can hurt here or anywhere in the knee, it can hurt in the ankle and in the foot as well. So try to keep the foot aligned straight with the knee. So you can see as well with squats, if the feet are out to the side but the knees come in, the ankles roll in. If you're really pedantic, think about having the outside edges of the feet parallel, that'll naturally lift the arches and the knees are tracking nicely here. If in doubt, wider knees rather than narrower knees is going to help because wider knees will bring more work into the hips again. The hips, one of their actions is to pull back as discussed, but also to pull the leg out to the side, the action of abduction and also external rotation. So knees out will make the pelvis more stable because you'll engage more through the hips.